Hello everyone, this is Caitlin and you are watching Zombie Eats Books. So I have some novels to talk about and then I also have some comics to talk about. I'm going to talk about the novels first just in case you're not interested in the comics and you can skip the second half of the video. And just a disclaimer, I am on my summer break so I am reading much more than I was able during the school year and I may be slightly overexcited about every single thing that I talk about. The first book that I'm going to talk about is Sula by Toni Morrison. This is a book about two girls who live in a predominantly black community in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and it is really good. So it's about them, it's about their identity both together and separate, and it's about this community that they live in. It's about their families that they come from and circumstances that have led them to the way that they are. I really enjoyed Toni Morrison's writing style. I also enjoyed all of the characters that she wrote about. I became really invested in this novel. It's a really short novel. I think it takes a really skilled writer to be able to write what feels like a complete novel in less than 200 pages. I don't know how many times I've read short novels where I don't feel like that. I'm definitely going to read more of Morrison's work. I think I have Song of Solomon on my shelf, which I'm probably now going to start sooner rather than later. I also read Bellamy by Guy de Maupassant. This is such a good novel. This was my favorite novel that I read between the three that I'm gonna talk about. This is about Bellamy. He is a young man who comes to Paris and wants to climb the ranks of society. He comes from these humble beginnings. His parents own an inn in the country and they're poor and, you know, they live a country life. They don't know anything about city life. You know, you would think that would make him an endearing character, make him sort of genuine. No. No. He is a total asshole. And... I loved every second of it. The beginning part of it is a little bit slow, but after that, it it's such a fast read. You learn about basically the seedy underbelly of Paris society and journalism and how people climb the ranks and how that's tied to, you know, sex and mistresses and how money and power are acquired. And it's all so shitty and superficial. In a way, it kind of reminded me of A Song of Ice and Fire, A Game of Thrones, because you just want to see the characters play the game. And you want to see characters, no matter if they're morally corrupt, win the game because you're fascinated by the way that they do it. I don't know if that makes me a bad person or not, but I, at some points in this novel, was actually rooting for this douchebag. At, I mean, at, towards the end, I hated him. I absolutely hated him. But that hate sort of builds gradually, even though from the very beginning, you know how superficial of a person he is. But he becomes meaner and harder and worse as the novel goes on because he sees what sort of behavior benefits him. I highly recommend it if you enjoy that scheming sort of novel and you don't mind a protagonist that is just a complete asshole. This next book that I read is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This is the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy and this is what I would call sci-fi horror. It felt like this author was channeling H.P. Lovecraft and I totally loved it because I really enjoy H.P. Lovecraft. And I know that there are a lot of people that don't like Lovecraft because of the sexism and the racism that is present in a lot of his stories. I do still appreciate his writing while I can, you know, identify those things and not like those things. But in this novel, you don't have to worry about that because, you know, it's a more modern novel and this author is actually writing about a group of women who go on an expedition. So that's refreshing. 
So I guess I should tell you what it's about. It's about a group of women explorers who have different professions. Uh, one is an archaeologist, one is a psychologist, one is a surveyor, and then the other one is a biologist. And they are sent on an expedition into Area X. Area X is no longer civilized country. It is no longer inhabited by humans. And that's all I really want to tell you about it. It's so good. I just loved it. It had that, you know, methodical scientific narrative. I definitely ordered the second book in this series. It wasn't perfect. I think I gave it four stars maybe on Goodreads. And by the way, the two books that I just talked about, Sula and Bellamy, I think I gave those five stars. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but it was really good, and I'm looking forward to the rest of this trilogy. Okay, so on to the comics and on to Suicide Squad volumes two and three. This is the new 52 Suicide Squad. I've never read Suicide Squad uh, previous to the new 52, but um, I'm really enjoying it. If you like the idea of a group of villains thrown together to carry out the will of a mysterious figure named Amanda Waller and her mysterious motives, then I think that you will like Suicide Squad. I really enjoy uh, Harley Quinn, and she is definitely front and center in here, and I'm just really liking the violence and the secrets and the completely unbelievable plots, and yeah. I also read Nailbiter. The writer is Joshua Williamson, and then the artist is Mike Henderson. Nailbiter is something that I've heard so much about. It's about a town in which these serial killers seem to come from, like mass amounts of serial killers come from this one town, and that's the mystery of the comic book. I was expecting a little bit more from this comic book. I did enjoy it. I am going to continue with it, but I hope that volume two is just a little more exciting, a little more, I don't know. There was something about it that just didn't wow me. It just felt a little better than mediocre, which is not something that I like to say when I know that I'm going to continue with something, but I, I see the potential for it getting a lot better. And let me show you the art. So I'll let you know how this comic continues and if I end up liking it a little better down the road. So I also read The Fade Out by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. This takes place in the 40s and it is about the movie industry and all the scandal involved in the movie industry and there is a murder at the very beginning of the comic book and your main character, who is a writer for the movie studio, wakes up in the apartment of the dead person and he has no recollection of what happened the night before so throughout this volume he's sort of trying to piece together his memory and trying to figure out why certain people look familiar to him. I probably liked it just a little bit more than Nailbiter and I'll definitely be continuing with it I don't get to read a lot of comic books that take place in the 40s, and I think that's fun. I also um, am really enjoying the art, so let me show you that. I also read I, Zombie. This is by Chris Robertson, and I enjoyed this, but I didn't love it. I am still going to continue with it just to see if I like volume two a little better kind of in the same place that I am with Nailbiter. This isn't like the series. It's a little bit different. I mean, she has a completely different origin in the comic books than she does in the TV series. She's not working in the morgue. She's actually a grave digger. Yeah, it's, it's somewhat similar to the series, but there are a lot of things that are different. Let me show you the art. So hopefully I like volume two a little bit better and we'll see what happens. So I did really enjoy The Beauty, and this is by Jeremy Hahn. The Beauty is about an STD called The Beauty. When you get this STD, you become outwardly beautiful, 
but there are definitely some side effects that you want to think about before you purposely contract it. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to tell you what those are, but the story is just really interesting. It's unique. I definitely have no idea where it's going, so I'm looking forward to volume two. I like the characters that they've come up with to be the protagonists, and yeah, I really like it. So let me show you the art. Yeah, so this is a good story. If it sounds like something that might be up your alley, then check it out. So my favorite comic book that I read was Black Magic by Greg Rucka, and then the art is by uh, Nicola Scott. The art, by the way, is gorgeous, which I will show you. But this is about a cop who is also a witch, and she comes upon a case that involves black magic, and she kind of has to conceal the fact that she's a witch, but also figure out these crimes that she knows are somehow related to her. It's so good. I loved it. It just has all the elements that I love in comic books. First of all, I should probably tell you that I love stories about witches. So if you don't love stories about witches, then you know, maybe tone down my enthusiasm a little bit. But what I also loved about this comic was that um, the protagonist is just a really strong woman. Um, she's very methodical. She's very thoughtful. She has, you know, just this sense of strength. Let me show you the art. It's mostly black and white, but whenever there's magic involved, then there's color. So I'll show you a really fantastic page that I just loved. Look how gorgeous this is. So if I had to pick a comic, only one comic that I could continue with out of the comics that I read, it would absolutely be this one. Yeah, so thanks for watching. That's everything that I have. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought about them. Bye-bye.